Because you've seen the uh, Jeep Liberty getting unloaded there. Uh, the reason why I took the wheels and tires off is uh, come to find out a lot of people around here have Jeep Liberties. It's kind of like one of those vehicles that in the area there's just a lot of them. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I ended up talking to a lady and. Uh, and she needed some stuff and then so I ended up putting a little quick ad up um, and I got a bunch of calls and two ladies that work up at the dollar store both have blue Jeep Liberties almost identical to the one I was scrapping so um, they needed some random parts nothing too big but I got the uh, I got the uh, four rims and tires sold for a uh, hundred bucks the ladies coming on saturday to get those um the tires weren't great at all nothing nothing great but i guess uh you know a lot of people in hard times up here and uh i guess they'll get you by for a while if you if you got junk on there but yeah so that was nice uh and then i sold today a lady uh the spare tire and she uh, called me about a bunch of like little stuff so I just started taking stuff off of it and uh, made a nice little bin of uh, all kinds of stuff I mean that alternator online you know to buy it anywhere from the parts store it's uh, around hundred and thirty dollars so I figured I'd take that out took the tail lights anything that was fairly easy to get off um, she said she had a coil issue, so I took all the coils out and uh, the, um, you know, cluster. Uh, another lady was squawking about a radio, so just to be sure, I took that out. I know I tested that. That worked good. Uh, I sold, so I sold the lady the spare and the cooling fan. It was only two bolts and uh, clipped in. And uh, I just... Um, Obviously the the thing didn't run so I couldn't really test that but I ended up just uh, Testing it with the jump pack touch the wires to it and it started up and spun so that's our set so anyway Went and delivered that it was a quick 50 bucks and then the uh, The four rims and tires like I said sell those on Saturday, so I figured you like to see a little rundown of uh, what I got for each thing. Um, so, there's the uh, 03 Kia Sedona minivan. That was uh, surprisingly heavy. 4,700 pounds that thing weighed. You know, um, just to give you a little uh, tutorial on how it works, if you didn't know, the gross is... The whole thing when I pull on the scale, the truck trailer, junk on it, me sitting in it. Um, my dog was with me that day too, so that that weight's on there. And then I dumped the junk, come back on, and uh, the uh, tear is that weight. And then that's what you're left over with. That's what you get paid for. 141 bucks. That was uh, that was the biggest one. It's um, 60 a ton, by the way, up here. That's what he's paying. It's uh, 70 if you go to Bangor, but there's no way I'm going to make up the gas and the dually for that. So there we got the Jeep I did today, 03 Liberty, 113 bucks. There's the weight for that, 37.80, not bad. I did put some stuff in there as a bunch of those old uh, bicycle wheels and tires and uh, but I did take some weight off of that too that's why it's 76 is the tear because I put the rims and tires back in and drove back on the scale so that's why that weight is like that then you got that Camry I don't know if you guys seen the Camry uh, pick that up on Sunday for uh, that one was 50 bucks, the lady wanted 100, but she needed it out of the yard. 
There's the weight for that. 9780. 96 Monte Carlo. There's your weights. 100 bucks even on that one. Here's that focus. First one. Only 80 bucks. Little white bastard that one. 2640. So, of all those, I paid 50 bucks for the Focus, 50 for the Camry. The other cars were totally free. And then, made 50 today. Another 100 for those wheels and tires on Saturday. And don't forget the real gold. Oh yeah, the real gold's in there. I talked to the guy about cats. Um, he said he was going to get some list, but I've asked him three times. He doesn't seem very interested. He did say he would buy them, but something's not quite right. Because when I, you know, I told him I have seven cats to sell. Um, you'd figure he would uh, want to do something. But you're not really jumping to it, so yeah, not really sure. Uh, but it's money in the bank because uh, probably about four or five hundred bucks worth of cats in this bin right here. Um, you can see I went to all lengths on that Camry, there was two pre cats, I took that manifold right off. That was the one that was uh. Yeah, that was the one that was underneath the car on the Camry. And this was another one that was on the flex pipe underneath the motor. So all three of those came off that Camry. That Liberty, the big heavy one underneath. Now there was two pre-cats on that Liberty. They were up by the manifold. And the wheel wells tucked right in there. It's a 37 V6. Uh, I just didn't really feel like getting those off. Um, need a set of torches or something. Would have been too hard to get in there with the sawzall. And the bolts were just completely rotted. So, but. And you got your old bread loaf. Off the Monte Carlo. Those are always nice. It's like a hundred bucks, I think. Uh, there's the uh, Kia. That had one big one underneath. And then, of course, the uh, Focus. That's about uh, 120. I got a price for that one. It was, uh, that was a little bit tough to get off. You saw the video on that anyway. I had to cut the pipes right on the manifold, but. <clears throat> and then we're not done. No, we're not done making money on those cars because, oh well, yeah, we got the batteries stacked up too. A couple electric motors in there. Got a little aluminum bin going. You got to separate the stuff up here. You got you to gotta do it. You want to make the money so a little money started anyway money started on those cars and uh, a little rainy day fund right here I guess uh, I don't know I'll give the guy another week up there and if he doesn't say anything then I'm gonna take that as uh, he's not very interested in the cats so that's all right. I'll find a core buyer, even if I got to take a little ride. Always got to go to Bangor for something anyway. Picked up the CC. I saw it sitting behind uh, Advanced Auto Parts up the street. Nice big heavy one, so I'll strip that down. There's all sorts of stuff in there, you know that. Back to the old days of stripping ACs. But. The copper 
and all that stuff is uh, where the money's at right now. I got a comment. Uh, it's interesting, actually. Uh, there's a few comments, you know, obviously on the uh, farm truck uh, explanation video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Didn't bore you too much, but um, just kind of kind of set it straight on that anyway. But um, a few people had uh, referred to the old farm truck as really not remembering it and uh, saying that they remember it for having the pink engine. Um, that kind of hurts a little bit because uh, it's really not what it was known for. That was more towards the end of its life. Um, it actually, uh, for a lot of years, had a very strong uh, 350 in it with a 4-speed, and that's what made me all my money. Um, you know, that truck was a complete workhorse. Uh, that 350 still hanging around somewhere, but uh, I don't think that, you know, we don't think that engine was completely stock, to tell you the truth. But... But yeah, um, towards the end of its life, I I got sick of the four-speed, you know. Your leg gets uh, tired of hitting the old manual clutch. And uh, sort of one of those things, somebody tells you not to do something, you sort of just want to do it, just out of spite. And uh, so I had got a, uh, I had a nice turbo 400. Um, from a three-quarter ton Suburban that I knew was good hanging around and then I picked up just for the hell of it this guy had a uh, 1980 Monte Carlo with a 267 in it he junked the car because it rotted out and he put the engine uh, in the corner on a stand and it sat there for years but the reason why he took it out is because he completely rebuilt it brand new um, and then the car just, uh, the frame just fell right off of it pretty much. So anyway, he was, uh, I was there picking up some scrap and he's like, yeah, he's talking about the engine. I said, how much do you want for that? And I told him what I was going to do with it, what I had, had in mind. And uh, he said, yeah, you can have it for a hundred bucks if you want to do that. So that's, um, that was the 267 and it was sort of a joke slash worst idea ever because uh yeah i painted it pink for reasons and uh slapped it in there with the turbo 400 which is completely just unheard of and uh it sounded cool and it ran good nice and smooth reliable but it had no power and it used a shit ton of gas it was just ridiculous but Anyway, for, you know, to remember the farm truck, don't remember it for having a pink engine. It's, it's got a lot, a lot more memories than that. Uh, it was a great truck. It made me, I mean, it made me thousands of dollars anyway over the years. Scrapped so much stuff. Told the trailer a lot. When I first got the old, uh, the original farm truck, 77C20, um, it was, when I bought it off a kid, he said he got it off his grandfather, and, uh, he called it an old farm truck, and he said it like, that's an old farm truck, so, I bought that thing for 500 bucks, he said it didn't run, had an electrical issue, it needed a starter. The brand new starter was behind the seat. Uh, I slapped it in, I tapped the key, and then uh, that was it. But I always referred to it as the old farm truck. And I said, you know, let's, uh, oh, come on, let's hop in the old farm truck, go pick up that scrap. And uh, that's when I really got into uh, scrapping appliances and stuff and you know just uh, that kind of stuff and not just cars so it had nothing to do with um, you know the fact of the uh, the farm truck from the TV show 
Street Outlaws, you know, a lot of people always comment, they still do today on my videos, you know, why do you call it the farm truck, that ain't the farm truck, it's nothing like it, you know, well, don't try to be like the guy in the show, you know, that's what they say, but, uh, you know, actually, to get technical, when I started calling my truck the farm truck, it was, uh, that was before that was even popular, I think it was before it even came out, um, there was probably just a few videos floating around YouTube of the uh, OKC farm truck there doing wheelies and shit off the line. I don't even think the show was going yet, but well, that answers your question anyway. That's why I call it farm truck, and uh, this actually being so beat up like it is is actually more of a farm truck, and uh, yeah. I, you know, I put the mirrors on, I put the sides, that's what it is, it's an old farm truck. What is a farm truck? It's a, an old beat up truck, trusty old thing that's been on a farm that the farmer relies on. He goes out, taps the key, does what he's got to do. If you don't know what a farm truck is, it's what it is. Well, thanks again. Later.